Well, what a weekend, what a weekend. So, no update on the Majors situation. So, for those who are not aware, Jonathan Majors, who stars as Kang, as well as Creed 3, was arrested. He was released. What exactly has happened or occurred? We don't quite know. Apparently, there was just some dispute with a woman. Some people were saying it's his girlfriend. We really don't know. So, there was just an arrest, an accusation... Jonathan Major's lawyer has assured us that there's nothing to it, the charges will be dropped. But even if it is just a small PR bump, it definitely comes at a very, very bad time for Marvel, reeling from Ant-Man 3 being very, very disappointing at the box office. Although technically, I guess, Jonathan is lucky this doesn't harm Creed 3 or Ant-Man 3 that much, but it does bring to mind, of course, will they replace him if the charges are true or if it becomes a bigger controversy. And obviously in the shadows here is the Magina Carano controversy where Gina Carano was fired for just causing a lot of embarrassment. So they just got rid of her. Good or bad, you can at least take Disney's side. They just don't want all these PR issues. So we'll have to wait and see if this Jonathan Major situation... <coughs> if the Jonathan Major situation keeps growing, growing, and, quote, some fans will want to see him replaced. It is a fact, though, that... With Kang in particular, he's in a very difficult situation because given how Kang operates that there are so many different versions of him, replacing him actually wouldn't harm the story. It would just be very natural just to say, well, wait, why doesn't this Kang look like the other Kang? Well, the Kang is a time traveler, so it doesn't have to match it physically exactly all the time. So he's in a very tricky situation with the casting that they could really just do it. And there's really no problem, so... It's, uh, it'll be interesting how this develops. And then in not much brighter news, and then on the DCU side, there's also some conflict over Shazam and its failing box office. It's had a major plunge in the next weekend, which just passed, and Zachary Levi has not exactly blamed The Rock, but he does confirm that there's a post credit scenes where there's a post credit scene where Shazam technically joins the JSA, but it doesn't have any JSA members. He tells people that, yes, they did plan to have the actual JSA, but there were just reasons that that didn't happen. Just like with Shazam 1, they did want Henry Cavill as Superman. They wanted fully Superman, but it just couldn't happen. Again, he never named The Rock, but The Rock has publicly said he doesn't like being blamed for Shazam 2 failing. He doesn't confirm he blocked these ideas, but again... We have a limited number of choices of who could do this in terms of vetoing these ideas, and we don't know for sure it is The Rock, but it probably is The Rock, so it's a little weird what is happening with the DCU. Now, now in terms of Zack Snyder, Zachary Levi is less ambiguous and is very open that he thinks the Zack Snyder people are going after him. I have to say, as a Zack Snyder fan, I've never made any hate videos on him. I do think, however, he is distorting the issue because he did put out this very public statement mocking the Snyder Cut and mocking a lot of the Snyder Cut fans. Now again, that's his prerogative. I don't really hate him for that, but he's made a lot of controversial statements and yes, yeah, so a lot of the Snyder Cut people are taking advantage of that and making him look bad, but he did make these choices. He apparently starred in this very, very problematic race-bending role as a Pakistani. No, I'm not joking. He's a dark-skinned Pakistani in some small film, so he's made some very weird choices as well as supporting Jordan Peterson, so make of that what you will. But I don't hate Zachary Levi, and he probably will survive in the new DCU, and I actually recommend Shazam too, but it is pretty weak, so I can't be shocked that its box office has really fallen, and that even Warner Brothers has lost hope, and they're already offering it on digital in a couple of weeks, so it's looking very bad for Shazam too, but has The Rock single-handedly destroyed the Shazam story? I'm a little skeptical, but again, we only have a limited number of choices of who could do this in terms of vetoing these ideas. And using the Suicide Squad in Shazam 2 looks a little strange and weird, but I guess that's the best they could have done. But apparently there was no conspiracy for James Gunn to keep putting his wife into these projects. They did want to use the JSA, but they just couldn't for reasons. And there we are. So, a lot of turmoil with the MCU and DCU. We'll have to wait and see if all this is clarified in the weeks ahead.